On the night of May the 24th, 1856, eight men entered the house of slave owner James Doyle, killing the house's five inhabitants. Their leader was John Brown, a charismatic abolitionist who believed it was his God-given destiny to free the slaves. Many abolitionist leaders were divided about John Brown. The famous lecturer, William Lloyd Garrison, admired Brown for his audacity and strong anti-slavery views, yet disapproved of his violent modus operandi. Though many abolitionist leaders were happy to simply debate and discuss the issue of slavery, John Brown was a man of action. He believed that the whole 30 years of the abolitionist movement had done nothing to abolish slavery. Violence was the only answer. Yet the events that occurred in Kansas were just the beginning. Brown developed an elaborate plan to free the slaves. He and a small band of dedicated followers prepared to attack Harper's Ferry and steal weaponry from a local arsenal. Harper's Ferry was a small town in northern Virginia. It was located on a strategic position between two rivers, and Brown wanted it as a springboard for his invasion of the South. On the night of October 16, 1859, Brown led a small band of 21 men to Harper's Ferry. They expected local slaves to rise up and join them, but none came. The only people who did rise up were the Virginian townspeople, who quickly attacked Brown and his men. A battle ensued, and Brown was forced to retreat to a local engine house. News of the raid quickly spread. A regiment of Marines, under Colonel Robert E. Lee, arrived and stormed the engine house, easily killing ten men and capturing the rest, including Brown. Brown was later tried for crimes of treason, murder, and conspiracy, all punishable by death. He said, I deny everything but a design on my part to feed the slaves. Every man in this court would have deemed it an act worthy of reward rather than punishment. Brown was sentenced for execution on December the 2nd, 1859. As he went up to the gallows, the famous poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson, commented that Brown will make the gallows glorious like the cross. Just as people were divided about Brown during his life, they were even more divided about his death. It will be a terrible losing day for all slaveholders when John Brown and his associates are brought to the gallows. It will be sowing seed broadcast for a harvest of retribution. I have no criticism of Brown, nor of the means which he took to carry out his great idea. John Brown agreed with us thinking slavery wrong, yet that cannot excuse violence bloodshed, and treason. Many Southerners were frightened by the events at Harper's Ferry, fearing that it would be a harbinger for things to come. One South Carolina newspaper went so far as to say, The sooner we get out of the Union, the better. Whatever his accomplishments, views, or motives were, John Brown's legacy is clear. His execution firmly split the country in half and set it on the path to civil war.